All right, it's the CES meeting. Today is August 17. Um, we only have, uh, we've decided to defer the topic of whether to break the uh, compartment's proposal onto smaller topics to uh, a, a future meeting when we can have um, a quorum on that. Um, for now, uh, Carity has suggested that we discuss the ergonomics of the module constructor. Okay, should we start? Yeah, let's do it. Yeah, so um, let me share the, the link to the comment from Nicolo. I think it's here. Let's see, share. Um, and, and this is something that we did discuss briefly when we were talking about changing the implementer to the referral. And I think the at, the at the moment the we were so focused on the referral that we didn't think much about okay what if we don't have any of this and we just let it be on the on the input on input hook um, and specifically that you can create an input hook that is that has sufficient information via the closure to know what the referral is. Um, and we did touch on it briefly, but we didn't went too too deep into it. And I think this the proposal from Nicolo is to either make the argument to be a generic, it's not really a referral, it's just some context object of some sort. And this context object will contain whatever you want it to contain, be no it could be anything, whatever it is, we don't care. And, and so that's not different from what we have right now. In fact, it is well, whatever you want. You can put in all or whatever. Uh, so we don't prescribe that. Really, just a renaming um, concept. But the, I think the reflection of this is basically that this is a ergonomic um, uh, a, a improvement that we did on the API by saying you can pass whatever you want. We don't care about what you pass. Uh, we will just propagate it. We will never use it. We will never try to hold on to it. Uh, we just store the value and give it back to you. Um, you can still do the same if you're doing binding, a, a dot bind, or you can create a input hook per instance that you create and that might contain the sufficient information about what you want to do and so on. Um, so it's really about whether or not we do want these uh, uh, ergonomic improvements there. And if we do want it, uh, make it a little bit more clear, I would say, that the argument that you pass is just for you to receive it later on. We don't do anything with it. I think that's kind of the concern that I have because this is a very low level API. You could do this in user land. Um, should we? give you the ability to do this uh, a little nicer or we just uh, do something different. So that's kind of where we are right now. So what concretely are we arguing to change? Um, my impression is that uh, it, what, what does change? Is it the, just the name? Of one the, option, I think option A is that we rename the second argument. Um, option B is that we remove the second argument altogether and you are responsible for doing that yourself. In which case it becomes the, in which case it's, uh, it's necessary to construct an import hook per module. Is that right? Yeah. Right. right. Yes. Um, I think that having an import hook constructed per module is um problematic for node i suspect um or emulating a node like environment um so creating oh, an object on the order of one per module um is something that they tried to avoid with import meta re dot resolve having a having a closure import meta resolve in node was purportedly problematic. 
So I, I don't I don't know whether it's a problem or not, but I do know that if we thread a context object, then it's not going to be a problem. Yeah, no, you assuming that the issue is you have so many input hooks that become a problem. I think also the passing the argument, the second argument to be some kind of object is also the same, has the same characteristics. You you have to create that object per module. So it's right, though it can be a string in the common case. Yeah, you could you could make it in a string, yes. Most likely people will do more than a string though. And I mean, you still have the new model object for every module and the module source object for every module. So you still, you already have different objects for each module. This will be just one more. Yeah, if I recall correctly, one of the things you concretely proposed, Nicolo, is that possibly that the context object could be the module instance itself. And um, I haven't taken the time to respond to that in the discussion, but. Yeah, so. That would still need the closure if you need to pass additional metadata to the import hook. So that is unrelated. Okay. Uh, like the, I was suggesting that the referrer could be uh, the module itself instead of a string. Uh -huh. uh, this doesn't solve the, the passing metadata uh, use case. So like the, the, the question here is mostly, do we want to uh, give a way to pass some metadata, which could be like a metadata also includes the referrer, or do we, do we just uh, ask people to do that by themselves by using a closure or by like, using bin to pass some context in the hook before passing it to the module constructor? So my, my position is that we should continue to name the argument referrer. We should also allow the referrer to be an arbitrary object so that functionally it can be used in the way you describe. I think naming it referrer is helpful for indicating what we expect common usage to be, whereas, and also allowing it to be an arbitrary object allows us to open up more, some of these additional use cases. Um, leaving the refer argument out of the import hook, I think is, um, it, again, although it can be made to work by using closures, I think that it's useful to have a shared closure for large groups of modules. It's, I, I feel it would be a waste to leave that performance possibility on the floor. Yes, like I agree that the current spec is like, I prefer the current spec where we have this object, like this parameter. I like my main suggestion was to rename it to something else because it's like, even if we might expect people to just pass a string there, uh, this can be much more. And it's strange to name an argument based on some expected usage that does not reflect uh, what the, like the spec algorithm expect it to be uh what what do you expect it to be if it's not just the referrer so man like my expectations all come from the HTML spec uh by reading what they do and currently modules have an host defined slot that contains like that in html contains a lot of metadata about the the module uh it contains some like options regarding how to fetch dependencies, some security policies. I think it contains a reference to the imports map. And I would expect uh, an, like a virtualized HTML environment to use this uh, referral or context object to store all those metadata effectively, like removing the need for the host defined slot on the module. We just has, have this generic object now. Those don't sound like things that consistently vary from module to module. Like some of those could be captured in your closure and some of them would vary on a module by module basis. Yes, like most of them are just passed as is to modules. Uh, in some cases, they change the fetch options from module to dependency. 
Mm -hmm. And the only things that always change is in fact the, the referral URL. What changes the fetch options? Uh, I, I don't know, uh, but like a fetch options object have, has a method to get the, like they call it the, the shending fetch options and they might be different. I just do not know when they're different. Yeah. So there, yeah, okay. I still, so uh, let's concretely uh, con contrast leaving the name as referrer, in which case it's referrer specific metadata versus naming it something like context or meta. So meta is right out, obviously, that would be confusing. Context is also very vague. Um, as a standalone word, it's like utils or manager or something like that. It is like, what, what kind of context is this? I, I think that having the name be referrer, that the name referrer can be seen as this, forgive me, a synecdoche of referrer context. Um, there's a shorthand for that. Uh, and that, that's on the assumption that it can be understood that it is referrer specific metadata, as opposed to metadata that it does not vary based off of the referrer, which could be better, uh, better communicated through closure. So I can buy that argument. Uh, there, are already, there is already a case where we have an argument with a very generic name, which is this argument of array methods, which is just called this arg. Um, so like it's very generic. Yeah, it, it implies it implies the this of the, the method that's calling the callback. So that, that makes a lot of sense in that case. Yeah, okay. And, well, yeah, I mean, I don't really feel strongly about the name of something yeah. as long as the algorithm does what I want it to do. Yeah, um, so, uh, so a couple of comments on these, not specifically on what you're talking right now, but in general, I will say that there are not many APIs today that I can think of that will do this sort of thing. Um, the closest one, I think Nicolo mentioned it, the array uh, methods where you can pass a this argument or something like that on the callbacks for the callback. The this argument could be a possibility here as well, although it might, it might be a little confusing, I would say, but there is some precedent about that in my work. I don't know. I don't remember yeah. anyone complaining much about this argument. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and, and I like using that precedent in order to establish the argument order of the callback, of the import hook as a callback. That that makes sense to me. Yeah, I. so that's one comment. The second comment is that I understand that the referral um, is an important concept when you have these things that uh, controls multiple modules or uh, act as a um, master puppet of multiple objects, uh, multiple modules in this case. But the reality is that this new API is not about controlling a set of modules, it's about controlling one module at a time. Um, that made me think that the concept or referral maybe is not uh, a thing that aligns well with the principles of this new API. Uh, we can omit it all together and say there is no referral. You have one module, you have the hook for that module, you figure it out uh, as a low level, you can do all these kind of things that you can do. Um, if we want to introduce the concept of the this argument, I'm fine with that because it, it is a callback and then you, you can receive a this value in that callback if you want to. Otherwise you get on the fine. Um, so that seems more simple to explain, more simple to teach. Right now, when, when I was writing some of the examples, 
uh, if it doesn't it doesn't feel to me that it is very easy to teach. Okay, you have to pass this argument here, and then you will receive the same argument down here in the same callback that you're passing um, in the argument after the argument that you're passing. So it's like, ah, how do you explain that to people? So it's, it becomes a little bit of a, 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 from the teachability point of view, I think that is a problem because there are no precedent for that. Yes, but from a from a teachability point of view, omitting the ref, omitting refer from the API does not does not avoid having to teach the concept. The sure, concept is still but, need, they still need to understand the concept in order to build a module system, and not having it in the not having it present in the API is just de deferring that concern to a mechanism outside of the documentation. Sure, but the, the, you're correct that at some point you you might need to learn about um, about these these sort of things. And I mean, there you, there is exactly one case in which you would not need to know about referrers in order to implement a module system, and that is one where import specifiers cannot start with dot slash or dot dot slash. I'd suggest that that is a bridge too far. Can you repeat that? I didn't quite get that. The only way to construct a module system, it, to be clear, turning the argument around, it is possible to create a module graph that does not have the concept of a referrer. You can effectively use the module API in that way, but you can only do so if it is not possible in that module system to have relative module specifiers like dot slash or dot dot slash in an import statement. If, but, and on the other hand, if you have a module system that supports the concept of relative module specifiers, which all of them do in practice, you need a refer. Okay, so a couple of notes on these. I think it's important to highlight that um, the current API, the rename API, the new API with this value, and the API without this value and without the referral, they all have the same capabilities. This is all about ergonomics. So they all have the same capabilities. The ergonomics way. and performance. Sure. I'm not talking about performance, I'm talking about capabilities. So the, 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 the performance is something that we can chat about, but they all have the same capabilities. You can build the same thing out of that. It That's doesn't true. matter which one we choose. Um, what, I, what I was talking about, the teachability of it. So normally what I use for these cases, I, I focus on the, what I what, what is called the, the sum of proximal development. So you learn first, you can build an instance of a module and you can resolve the things for that module first. And, um, and you do that by providing a hook that's specific to that module. And then you go to the next stage, and the, the, what we call the, 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 the proxy, proximal development. Like you're gonna learn how to make it more complex. When you yeah. make it more complex, then at that point is when you introduce the concept of saying, hey, guess what? You can share this thing. And in order for you to share this thing, you have to have the way to pass this, to, to, to resolve what the referral is. Because now this thing is going to be called from multiple instances of a module, and you need to know which instance is the one that is calling you. And that's where you will teach them how to, uh, or you, that's what, when you introduce the concept of referral. You, you need to build a system that allows you to figure out what the referral is. And with the current API, I don't see that because you have to jump in and say, there is this thing here. We're going to talk about that later, but this thing here for now, put it on the file. That okay. Not acceptable. So yeah. from that perspective, then uh, the, this value makes more sense because then you what you do is you, you teach in the simple API and then you teach them that if they need to share the hook, what they need to do is to add this new thing, which is the last argument called this argument. So that's, okay. you see the, 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 how they, 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 they develop the, the knowledge base based on adding new things to the API. 
from that perspective, that's where I disagree with the Korean API. It, it feels very, very unnatural when you're writing the first thing, which I is see. the creative thing that results to this other thing, and that's it. Right. So, so if I'm, so I, for one, totally agree that having an API that's designed for the purposes of a graduated tutorial that formally ignores concepts until they're needed to, for complications is good. Um, and I think that having the referrer as the second argument of the import book satisfies that nicely because you don't have to, in the first, in the first draft of, uh, in your first essay of understanding how to construct a module, you don't even need to receive that argument. Um, the, so, so where the current, the, the, the current API falls short is that the referrer argument appears too early in the argument order, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, when, when, when you create a module, you need to create a, a single module that you need, and you have to provide that thing now as a second argument that throws everything else uh, uh, out of the window because you don't need that thing. In, in, in some cases, you don't need that thing, and now you have to learn that this thing, even though you don't need it, you have to pass it on the front because there's no, no other option. I understand. Yeah. Okay. So I am amenable to moving it rightward. I'm the moving the the result uh, the refer argument rightward. I'm also amenable to making it an optional argument since null is a reasonable default for it. Um. So what are we considering for the argument order? Uh, we we know that we've I believe that we've agreed that the first two arguments are source and import hook. Correct. Right, source and the input hook right after. And in many cases, you only need those two. You don't need the other ones. Right. So what is what 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 is the what are you proposing for the subsequent arguments? So if we want to if we want to have um, at least the way I see it, if we want to have an argument that serve the purposes of providing and anchor to the referral, um, that should be the last argument of all. Because uh, in many cases, you will never use that thing. And the import meta, you will probably need a, it's more important than that argument and should be the, the argument before that. So you, at least in my mind, it is going, it's going to be source, the callback, the meta uh, that can be accessed by the source. And then finally, a thing that you will be able to access from within the hook. In whatever shape or form you access from within the hook, that's a separate conversation. But kind of that there, that's the order that I'm 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 tuning to. Yeah. Well, in terms of formally ignoring features, I could easily see ignoring meta as well. They they seem to be equivalent in my mind. The I mean, you cannot discriminate which one is the one that they're passing because neither of those you care about what the shape of it is. That's and correct. Meta, you only check that it happens if it is not null, it happens to it needs to be so it no no. And if it is not, if it is provided, then it must be a, an object, whether that's null or an actual qualifying object. But that's the only distinction there. Um Oh, I think I I also ignore nodes. So, uh, I mean, uh, throw on nodes, but I don't remember. But that meta is a thing that we don't care about. And then the other one we don't care about either. What would be the mechanism to determine which one is what? So if you ignore meta, then and you need to pass this extra thing, what will be the shape of it? Uh, Nicola? Okay, so I prefer to have this referral argument as last one, uh, but it has a big problem, which is we wouldn't be able to add new parameters uh, because they would be like after the last one. Like yeah. one day we'll have import assertions and we will probably need a new hook for import assertions. And where do we add this hook if we already have something which is supposed to be the last argument? Yes. And so a possible I'm... solution to this is to have a bag of hooks instead of a single function, uh, which is similar to what proxies do. They have all the hooks in an object. So we could look at it, we could call it a handler or an options bag or yeah. some such. Yeah, I'm, I, uh, that is actually what I would prefer. 
I prefer that, that the module constructor receive source import book and then an options bag. And then you're free to formally ignore any of the properties of the options bag because they have sensible defaults. Okay, well, I think that the import hook should be in the options bag because it's just one of the possible hooks. Hmm. Uh, okay, okay. But... <laughs> we're getting into a territory that I don't want to get, but sure, we can, we can talk about it. So the issue with that is that we have to then choose how we're going to use those hooks. And that's the same problem that we have with proxies. So what happened with proxies is that every time that you need to call a hook, you need to look up for the hook on the object that is given to you, the handler. So there's a performance penalty there that you're paying. Uh, we could choose not to do that. We could choose to pick up then and get them in, in memory and then get away with that. But we have to, we have to be um, more specific about that kind of, um, of uh, mechanism. Uh, we don't have much precedent on that, but um, uh, even in, if those are the cases, if you go with the object, then I would say that then the argument is not needed anymore because you use the object that is given to you as the actual this value when you call those hooks. Um, there is a precedent in HTML for that, which is good. Uh, it is the, the hooks on the Web Components API. So when you create a Web Component uh, class, when you declare a class and you define that class, at the moment of definition of the class, we extract the hooks, which is connected to back, text connect to back, adopt to back, and attribute change to back, uh, and even more data that we pass, the, the list of attributes that are observable. So we extract that from those objects and we hold onto them. And then when we need to call them, we call them. And it doesn't matter what you do in the construction path or whatever, it doesn't really matter at the instance level, or even uh, before instantiation. Um, which is a good precedent, I would say. It works well for the web. Sometimes confusing, but it works. Um, but the and, the, and they still use the constructor, um, which is the this itself during the construction path. So I will say that the that precedent will might work well for the module system, um, but it will, it will be a little bit more complicated. And it, it it, it eliminates the necessity for that argument, I would say. That's interesting. Jack? Uh, as I can recall, uh, I thought we have uh, moved something out of the options back in the last uh, SES meeting. And now, while why we are moving it into the options bag again? So we move it out of the option bag. Um, we're, uh, we're considering removing the import hook into the options bag. Yeah, but it was initially in the in the in the option bag. Um, the the problem. So at least what I remember, uh, Jack, is that the option bag was problematic because the hook is required um, and because the hooks the hook the, in this case the input hook is required you cannot have it on the fine and i can explain why uh, but uh, that's a reality right now it cannot be on the fine so having an option back that has only one thing there seems like a little uh off i would say uh, the reason why it cannot be uh undefined is because if it is undefined then what do you use the only choices that you have is to make it a default hook that does what the browser normally do but for that to function the hook has to receive a referral module record and there is no referral module record at that time that you can use because you don't know and if you want to use it the one that creates the instance that makes it difficult because then that makes the system contextual. So you go from one room to another and you create new modules from sources from another um, uh, realm and so on, it becomes uh, difficult. So to avoid all that altogether, we say 
a single argument that is always required is called the input hook. You must provide it, and then you get away with that. It's probably there's more to oh, dig in there because yeah, when we can... go ahead, Jack. Uh, yeah, uh, we moved that out because input hook was uh, required, but now it can be no to inherit the environment's import hook, right? No, you will not be able to do that. Cannot be no, cannot be undefined. It must be provided. You create a manual module, you must provide an input hook. You don't have a choice. Uh, I mean, I mean, if it is not provided, uh, it can inherit, right? It cannot, it cannot inherit because you don't have all the, all the pieces that will be needed for the default one to behave correctly. You will not be able to do that. I can explain with an example, but you will not be able to do that. Uh, I mean, I have, I have, I have a command. Uh, I have a comment on the PR uh, on, on Carity's uh, pull request uh, about, uh, uh, let me, let me write that coding chat. Uh, new evaluators. Yeah, you put it two hours ago. I haven't get to that one, but um... import hook. Yeah, you can you can you cannot do that for the reasons that I explained before. If the input hook is not passed, what are you going to build? You're going to build a one that uses the default behavior. What is the default behavior? Is the one that we drafted in the in the in the uh, block module. That's a good example. Maybe we you can look at that one. But if you look at that one that we use in the let's see readable PR here. Uh, sorry, let me paste this link. Just to clarify on that, I think it's important. So you go to that one and you will see that in the runtime semantics of uh, the module block, there is a default behavior there, the if condition 9a. And in that 9a, you do need to have a referral a script or module. Uh, you, you don't have that. You, you want to have that, you have to make the new module contextual, which we don't want. That's basically eval, direct eval. We don't want that. Um, there's a piece of this that I don't fully understand is um, the evaluator's proposal is going to necessitate that there be an internal slot on the module constructor that is analogous to the context slot on the function constructor. And which is to say that the context doesn't have to be from dynamic scope. It is a property intrinsic to the instance of the module constructor. Right. So, um, so again, like the, the problem is that if I do new module in, I, I, I'm writing a module in that module, I'm writing new module. Mm -hmm. I'm passing a source and I'm not passing a hook. Okay. Okay. I will use a default hook. What is the referral? Is it the module that do that did the new module, or is it the global script? Like in this case, no script or no. What is the referral? You don't have the referral. You have to. You have to. You have to find a referral. Which one is it? It's ambiguous. You don't know. And if you want to make it a module, then you have to make it contextual. Meaning if I grab that module constructor and I go into a different realm and I do a new module, what happened there? Yes, it would look up the property, the context property of the module constructor itself. And then it would follow that to the script or record associated with the module constructor. Again, what is the referral? Is it going to be the module that did the new module? Or is it going to be a global thing? It would be a global thing. So, so anywhere where I do new module, it would be scoped to the evaluators, which currently is equivalent to global at the moment. So it would be no referral, basically. Uh, yes, unless 
unless you constructed an evaluator with one. No referral. I'm not sure. I'm not sure uh, that's the right approach. We can talk about it. I can think more about it, but I don't think that's. Um, so basically, you are opening the door for anyone at any level to create a module that escapes the conditions of the module that you um, that you are uh, applying restrictions to. Let me let me do it, let me do it this way. So if if I if I create a module from source and the source of that module is the one doing new module or calling import or mm -hmm. whatever. Um, so if they call import, you are always in control, right? Yes. It goes through your hook. Yes. If they want to escape that hook, they will have to do some sort, a simple sort that only does an import, okay? And so basically is a single line source. They now do a new module on that source without a hook and now they're going global. Oh, no, not global, associated with the current. So the, the way that you are, the way you arrange, an, arrange a compartment in terms of evaluators is to create a new bank of evaluators that has a new global. Yeah, but you, 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 you have to solve it without a compartment. Then you go into compartments, right? You have to solve it. You have to solve this problem with four compartments. Yeah, with evaluators. Um. No, it's just very simple, very simple. Just forget about evaluators and everything. I have a module that I create from source. And in that source, I want to be able to tap into the, the global behavior without using the reflection API. I want to tap into the global behavior. How do I do that? With the current API, you do not have the ability to do that. You can. You 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 Come must on. use the import itself. You must use the reflection API, or you have to do your own thing with a hook, a, a, a custom hook. Yes, you create the three options. If you open the door for that, then I will be able to construct any source that automatically relies on the global behavior for the source that I'm constructing. I'm I'm not sure. We want that. So it's just that, that's my current uh, model. Like that, I I feel that that there might be some issues there. I don't I don't know. I haven't think much about it. We never talk about this particular point uh, in detail. But it feels to me that there might be some issues there that will be problematic because now I can just simply do a new module with the sort which has a single import statement and automatically I'm just bypassing the import hook that was provided for the source that I'm evaluating into it. Um, you just so you haven't provided that. You just it haven't was, It was expressly omitted. It's like, if you create, so- No, 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 I, I'm, I have a source and I create an instance of that source with a hook. I'm the one creating all that. Okay, um, so you have specified a hook. I grab the source from you. And I create that module instance, and I'm giving my hook. So any module that you require, I am the one providing that to you. You don't have any option beyond that in the current mechanism. Right. Um, so you do import, you go through me. You do, uh, well, you can only do import because the static one, I, I'll get the, no matter right, what. Right. But if you construct a new module instance. You might construct a new module today, yeah, you would, yeah. but you have to provide a hook. So yeah. you have to invent something to do the thing, which most likely you will go through my import somehow. I don't know. You will do import under the hook for my stuff. And I grab it. I, I, I control you. Now, if that thing is optional, Chris will be able to create a single line module that goes and does an import. And it will bypass the restrictions that I put onto you because you will go straight into the global. I can already do that. Regardless, I construct a new function and use its dynamic import. You construct. I use new module, a new function using the function constructor, pass no arguments, return dynamic import. Yeah, we should limit that 
by using evaluators. So you could do that only obviously if the if the if you can if you can construct new functions, which is basically if you can do eval. Right. Or to do that. Uh, is that true? Yes. Uh, so so which which is to say having module do the same thing is consistent and we do not expect to be able to prevent that short of having an evaluator constructor and having an evaluators constructor should be sufficient to uh, to prevent that kind of escape like preventing escape before introducing evaluators is not possible Yeah, because you have access to global objects. Okay. Very good point. Uh, I have to think more about that. What about multi-realm? Yeah, multi-realm is, is the same story, right? If you can get the function constructor from another realm, from the same origin iframe, for example, you can get access to its dynamic import behavior. Okay, so do you want to open an issue so we can see if we can accommodate that in the spec and discuss it? Sure, well, uh, what, what? Default hook, default hook. Oh, okay, yeah, sure. This is a default hook. Yes, okay. So if the hook is, if the hook can be on the find then the option back makes more sense for other hooks. So then the remaining part of it will be whether or not we will be able to use, but first, when do we extract the hook from the option bar? Second, do we use the option box itself as the context? In this case, that this value we're calling the hook, which supplements the 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 performance issue of not having a repair. Yes. Uh, and then the. Oh, okay. So not having the so uh, concretely. Huh. Yeah. There. There. Yeah. We can talk about that at length. I think the if the idea is. You're, you're, what you're suggesting is that if we have an options bag object that we treat as a, or that we treat as something more analogous to a proxy handler, except we want to capture all of the handler behaviors eagerly at the time of the construction of the module in order to well, I, not recapitulate the mistakes of the past. <laughs> well, I, I, that's the thing. So for me, for many, many years, that was a mistake. And now it's okay, well, it is a mistake. It is what it is, it is a mistake. But it turns out that I use it a lot. So I <laughs> yes. don't say that is a mistake. I use it a lot for performance-driven mechanisms. Like we replace the hooks for hooks that are um, more optimized for certain type of object. Once we detect that the object has certain capabilities or something like that. Like yeah, yeah. Exactly what in my brain that. is like if we if we determine that the, we we create a, a hook that the first time that is is hit. It, it makes analysis of the object. It makes uh, certain as, as assertions of the object and then change itself for something that is more suitable for the next call. And we, I use it all the time, but we use there, it all yeah. the time. And I, there's I, I'm not saying it's a mistake. I'm saying yeah, that yeah. unique is the only place in the language where we hold onto an object and then inspect values later on. That's the only place where we do that. Um, at least that I know of. And it, it also happens to be the same in the DOM API. I haven't found any API that does the same thing. Hold on to the object and then pick up values out of the, uh, of the object. Yeah, no, essentially, dynamic to use things as delegate objects and dynamically dispatch methods to them after you've received them by a low-level API. Uh, but that, that, we have uh, the, the, the precedent on uh, HML, I, I would like probably to follow that too. 
uh, then we use um, the same methods. In any case, there are a lot of possibilities there. And which yeah. often an issue just for that. Well, we can discuss in the same issue, the, the, the default. Okay. All right. Um, I'll, uh, I'll open an issue about the possibility of a default import hook and, and recapitulate some of the arguments we've made in this conversation. Um, and I'll make a note to that end. Wait, do you plan to continue discussing on NetPR until we have a final, like not final design, but a design we are all happy about, or do you plan to first merge the PR and then continue trading with the issues? Because I think that I think Carity at this point is just waiting for um, reviews. Can, can you ask the question again? Sorry, Nicholas. Like, Fine. do you want to continue discussing about uh, like the options back or the default import hook in that PR, or do you prefer to move the discussion to a new issue so that the PR can be merged with the Current yeah, I think you should do it later on after the PR is merged. Yeah. Is there anything pending on that PR to be merged? Let me see. I need to give it a review and I haven't. But on the other hand, my review wouldn't be particularly useful since I'm not fluent in spec text. <laughs> yeah, I don't remember if I have any blocking issues on the design yet. Yeah, there's nothing else pending here. It's only about the referral. Um, there's one for from on Nicolo, uh, but that was 20 days ago. Nicolo, if there's anything else there that you you think we need to review then or modify, let me know. If not, we can we can merge this and then continue making changes. I yeah, I think that everything is fine for me right now. Like, I don't remember having any problems with the current spec text. Like, I didn't deeply review it. I just, like, read it, but it looked fine. Yeah, I have a, a change request from Mark and a change request from Jack. I think both of them, they, they want from Jack. I don't remember which one is it. Yeah, uh, let's let's keep the repository moving and and do as much as we can in follow up issues. Oh, that one I've resolved already, so I can I can I can uh, request approval from Jack and the same for Mark. Okay. All right. Well, we're at five till the hour, and be good to close at a good time. Um, and I think that we've had a good conversation today. So, um, yeah, thank you again. Nicolo, uh, do you have time?